Hi everyone and welcome back. For our second example video on Taylor's inequality, we're going to consider the function f of x equals arctan x. We'll start by approximating this function using its third degree Maclaurin polynomial p30. We'll then use Taylor's inequality to determine the magnitude of the error when we make this approximation. Specifically, we'd like to find a constant upper bound for our error term when we approximate f of x using p30 for inputs between minus one-half and one-half. Okay, our first task is to find the third-degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function f of x equals arctan x. On assignment 8, you'll see a very efficient way to do this by starting with the Maclaurin polynomials of a related function, 1 over 1 minus x. It turns out that you can use a couple of our Taylor polynomial shortcuts to turn Maclaurin polynomials for this function into Maclaurin polynomials for arctan x. But I'll let you work through all the juicy details of this process on your assignment. This method is super slick, but remember that later in this video, we're going to be applying Taylor's inequality. This result, as you'll soon see, will require us to find the fourth derivative of arctan x. So since I'm going to have to compute lots of derivatives anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and find this Maclaurin polynomial by definition. I'm going to compute my derivatives, I'm going to plug in 0, and I'm going to put everything together in this way. So my function is f of x equals arctan x. Its first derivative is given by 1 over 1 plus x squared. And for the second derivative, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. I do low d high minus high d low. So that's 1 plus x squared times 1 prime minus high d low, 1 plus x squared prime. Square the bottom, and away we go. Now notice that the derivative of 1 is going to be 0, so I should be left with minus 2x over 1 plus x squared, all squared. Now I still need my third derivative, right? So I have to do the quotient rule one more time. I do low d high minus high d low, square the bottom and away we go. So low d high would give me minus 2, 1 plus x squared, squared, minus high d low. So that's plus 2x, and now I use the chain rule on the denominator to get 2x times 2, 1 plus x squared. And now I square the bottom, 1 plus x squared to the 4, and away we go. But hold on, have a look here. On the top, every term has one of these 1 plus x squareds, so I can actually cancel it with one of the things in the bottom. I'm left with minus 2 times 1 plus x squared plus 8x squared divided by 1 plus x squared cubed. Now if you simplify this, you should end up with 6x squared minus 2 over 1 plus x squared cubed. Okay, we have our derivatives, now we need to start building our polynomial. So I have to plug in 0 to each of the functions I found below. When I plug into f of x, I get f of 0 is equal to 0. When I plug into f prime, I have f prime of 0 is 1. In my second derivative, I get f double prime of 0 is 0. And for my third derivative, I get f triple prime of 0 is minus 2. Ah, okay, so we're going to get some simplification here. f of 0 is 0, and f double prime of 0 is 0. So I can actually throw out these two terms from my polynomial. All that I have left is x minus 2x cubed over 6. If you simplify this, you end up with x minus x cubed over 3. So there you have it, our third degree Maclaurin polynomial. The next step will be to understand the error in this approximation using Taylor's inequality. Taylor's inequality tells us that the magnitude of our error is no more than a constant k times the absolute value of x minus our center, x naught, raised to the power of n plus 1, divided by n plus 1 factorial. In this case, n is equal to 3, right? So n plus 1 is 4. We also know that the center of our approximation is 0. So my error is bounded above by k times x to the 4 divided by 4 factorial. We can drop the absolute value because anything raised to the power of 4 will be positive. We still need to determine this constant k though. Just like in the last video, you obtain k by looking at the next derivative of your function. Since in this case we're approximating f of x using a polynomial of degree 3, we can get information on k by looking at the fourth derivative of our function. The fourth derivative is the derivative of 6x squared minus 2 over 1 plus x squared cubed. 
This is the third derivative we found on the previous slide. Now I'm not going to work through all the computations here, but I'll let you verify that this fourth derivative should be given by minus 24x times x squared minus 1 over 1 plus x squared to the 4. Notice that this final expression for the fourth derivative has actually been cleaned up quite a bit. After I applied the quotient rule, I did my best to simplify this as much as possible. The reason why is because my next step is going to be to find an upper bound for this function in absolute value, at least for x values between minus 1 half and 1 half. Doing this can be a tricky task, but it's often helpful if you're working with a simplified expression that's been factored as much as possible. So let's go ahead and look at the absolute value of our fourth derivative. That's the absolute value of the expression that we had on the last line, minus 24x, x squared minus 1, divided by 1 plus x squared to the 4. Now one of our properties of absolute values is that it splits up nicely over quotients and products. So I could actually separate this absolute value over the factors in the numerator and the factors in the denominator. I could write this as 24 times the absolute value of x times the absolute value of x squared minus 1 divided by the absolute value of 1 plus x squared all to the power of 4. We'd now like to find an upper bound for this expression for x values between minus 1 half and 1 half. That's where we're making our approximation. So rather than looking for the exact maximum, the lowest upper bound possible, Let's just try to find some upper bound that might not be completely sharp. Finding this upper bound will be a lot easier than finding the actual maximum value. So take a look at this first term, absolute value of x. For x values between minus 1 half and 1 half, this absolute value of x term is always less than or equal to 1 half. Now let's take a look at our second term, absolute value of x squared minus 1. How big could this possibly get for x values between minus 1 half and 1 half? Well, if you think about it for a moment, you'll realize that x squared minus 1 describes an upward opening parabola whose vertex is down here at y equals minus 1. For x values between minus 1 half and 1 half, this parabola is entirely below the x-axis, right? So if we're wondering how big this term can get in absolute value, well, it looks like it's going to occur where this parabola is as negative as possible. It's going to occur down here where the parabola reaches a value of minus 1. So in absolute value, x squared minus 1 is always less than or equal to 1 on the interval from minus 1 half to 1 half. Finally, let's have a look at the terms in our denominator. Since the entire fraction will be biggest when the denominator is smallest, we have to ask ourselves, how small could this denominator be for x between minus 1 half and 1 half? To answer this question, we'll again look at the graph of the function. Note that 1 plus x squared is an upward opening parabola that lives above the x-axis. Its values are always positive. So if I want to minimize the absolute value of this term, I can do so at this point, at the vertex of the parabola. There, its height is given by 1. So this term here is always bigger than or equal to 1. Putting it all together, we see that the fourth derivative of f is bounded above an absolute value by 24 times 1 half times 1 divided by 1 to the 4. If you simplify, you get a value of 12. And this is the constant that I'm going to use for k. Now it's important to note that this k value of 12 is not actually the maximum value of our fourth derivative between minus 1 half and 1 half. The fourth derivative in absolute value never goes above 5. So 12 is not going to be the smallest value of k that we could pick, but it's probably the easiest one to find. We found it by analyzing each term separately, which is a lot easier than finding the absolute maximum of this function over the interval minus 1 half to 1 half. So let's use this value for k in our expression above. We have that the absolute value of the error is less than or equal to 12 times x to the 4 over 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24, so this expression is x to the 4 over 2. Now if we were to stop here, we'd have a polynomial bound on our error term, and I'll explain more about this on the next slide. But remember, in this question we're looking for a constant upper bound on the error. So we have to ask ourselves, how big could this expression be for x values between minus 1 half and 1 half. In this case, it's not too hard to see that this expression is largest 
when x is 1 half, giving us an upper bound on our error of 1 half to the 4 divided by 2, or equivalently 1 over 32. I'm going to end this video with a quick look at how we can think about our error term. From the previous slide, we saw that the size of the error in approximating arctan with its third degree Maclaurin polynomial over the interval from minus 1 half to 1 half was never more than 1 over 32. This means that the difference between our function's value and our polynomial's value is always between minus 1 over 32 and plus 1 over 32. If you move this polynomial to the other sides of the inequalities, it's telling us that arctan x is always sandwiched between these two polynomial curves. That's what you can see in the picture above. Arctan is given here in green, the lower polynomial is given in red, and the upper polynomial is given in blue. Arctan is always between the red curve and the blue curve. A little earlier in our calculation on the previous slide, we managed to show that the size of the error term was no more than x to the 4 over 2. We can think of this situation in much the same way. The difference between the function's value and the polynomial's value is always between minus x to the 4 over 2 and plus x to the 4 over 2. If you move the polynomial to the other side of the inequalities, we find that arctan x is always sandwiched between these two polynomial curves. We see a similar picture up above. Arctan is given in green, the lower polynomial curve in red, and the upper polynomial curve in blue. This idea of sandwiching our function between two polynomials will be incredibly important when we approximate integrals in the next lesson.